Hi, I'm Emily Taylor from Collage Quilter. This is the final tutorial video about making your Harvest Collage Quilt project. Okay, so let's dive right in. Hopefully you've had a wonderful time and I hope that you've learned a lot about making collage quilt and applied the color and um, I hope you've just had a great time. I have had a fun time with this. So I'm gonna show you what I'm doing with mine and we're gonna talk through some of the techniques and tricks that I have for you. All right, so first of all, this is going to be my quilt. So I'm keeping my quilt just four vegetables in size and I want you to notice that on opposite vegetables we have kind of the same quilt pattern. So I created this as a, it's a quilt as you go, it makes it really super simple. So just kind of a meander stitch on all of the vegetables and then the surrounding stitches are complementary across the diagonal. So you can see I did kind of a starburst here and I embellished it with some really pretty um, silk thread on the eggplant and the pepper and then I had fun doing echo quilting um, around the broccoli and the radish and then I added a little frame with this other cool yarn. I love fun yarn. I don't even knit and I just love yarn so I bought it because I wanted to use it and this was the perfect project so I had a lot of fun with that. So I encourage you to have fun with it. Again, I just did this on my domestic machine. I have a Bernina 440 Quilders Edition. It has a walking foot, which is really super helpful, and also a stitch regulator. So before you start quilting yourself, what you're going to do is this. You'll make your quilt sandwich. So for every single block, you're going to just do your quilt sandwich and you're gonna quilt them independently. So let me, um, let me tell you my quick formula. You're going to cut this size of vegetable, anything that you want. So for example, on the tomato, I cut it 15 inches square. That means my backside fabric is going to be two inches larger all around. It will be 17 inches square. And then the batting is going to be 16 inches square. So I, simple, I make it really simple on myself by just saying, okay, this is 15. I'm gonna go up by one inch all around for my batting and then two inches all around for my backing. Then I'm gonna pin everything in place. Now, one thing to keep in mind, when you're making a quilt using quilt along, quilt as you go blocks, just make sure that every block is the same. So start out trimming all of your collaged vegetables the same size. It doesn't matter if they're square or a rectangle, just so long as they're all the same size. Then, um, before you start quilting, do what I did. I always have a little scrap sitting around so that I can kind of experiment. And this is where I came up with the idea of making a, a box. I just had that yarn, like I said, and I wanted to do, I just did a zigzag stitch over it, made sure I was comfortable um, making that. So anyway, it's kind of always handy to have that nearby. The other thing that I did, I think I mentioned, um, on each of these, I had matching threads. So I had a dark yellow and a light yellow and green, uh, multiple shades of purple, multiple shades of red, because I wanted my thread in each of these to match, and then a matching thread for the background as well. Okay, so once you have your quilt sandwich together, you'll pin it, You'll quilt, start quilting with the vegetable first. And in this case, I wanna show you, I've got three different threads I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use the dark red for down here. I'm gonna use the medium red. Then I've got a pink for the highlight and I have two greens and that green is so little, I'll probably just end up using one of the green threads. And then I'll do whatever I'm gonna do on this. Um, then this is going to be a wall hanging. I just thought this would be super fun to hang in my pantry when it's finished. So when this is all finished, I'll share pictures of it, but you can see I'm gonna put it in this embroidery hoop. I'll trim this off and it will be a nice tidy little um, art piece in my pantry. Behind me, you'll see, I wanna show you, I'm super excited about my jack-o-lantern. So, I created these jack-o-lantern faces that are free downloads that you can get on collagequilter.com. So go to Collage Quilter if you wanna turn your pumpkin into a jack-o-lantern like this. 
this is what I did. And there's also gonna be a free video tutorial that shows you how to do this if you're interested. It's not hard, super simple. But I'm going to turn him into a pillow for my sofa. So you can see it's almost the right size. I'm gonna put, um, finish out the block, make sure it's the right size, quilt it, and then create a pillowcase. So anyway, back to the quilt. After you have your block done, and you can use as many blocks as you want, you can even turn this into a table runner, you will simply put the back sides of your quilted project together. So if I have, let's pretend this is ready to go, okay, that it's my quilt sandwich. My quilt sandwich, again, is my background, my batting, and the front of it. I will put my back sides together and stitch along that seam, and I actually use a half inch seam because I've got a half inch between the backing and the batting. And this allows me to have plenty of seam allowance, and then when I turn them together, the batting lines up right next to each other. So the effect is on the back, that seam is nice and snug and just looks great. And then on the front, you can't feel where the batting ends because it, it lines up, it butts up next to each other. So the front of this quilt then has the seams. And, and then you're just gonna measure out your quilt, make sure it's all squared up, and then measure out your, um, uh, what is this called? <laughs> My, um, oh, for crying out loud, I'm having a total brain cramp. <laughs> Sashing, my sashing here. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna figure out how wide I want my sashing, and the sashing is going to go right on top of the seam that binds these two together. And then, um, so the sashing needs to be double the width that you want it. So I chose to do an inch and a half sashing like this. That means you're going to double it, so you want three inches. Okay, and then you'll fold the two inside and press it. And then you can either stitch it like I did or you can use steam a seam and press it down. Um, anyway, I think it, it, it makes a really nice finished, finished project. I haven't bound it quite yet, but as soon as I do, I will again post it and um, share it with you. So I'm super excited to see how all of my projects are gonna come out my quilt, my wall hanging, and my pillow. So I would love to see what you end up doing. If you're making a quilt or wall um, hanging or table runner, please share it in the Collage Quilt Along with Emily Facebook group. And if you have any questions, please find me. Just go ahead and post the question in the Collage Quilt Along with Emily Facebook group, or you can find me at uh, Collage Quilter. Leave me a message there. My email is emily at collagequilter.com. So I hope to see you soon. And Amelia, did I mention everything about the pumpkin and the jack-o'-lantern? Okay, I think I did. We're good, right? Okay, guys, I hope I've got everything. If you have any questions, track me down. Okay, take care. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.